Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Now, the implied volatility, I've kind of already alluded to a little bit. Implied volatility is the volatility figure that, when entered into an option pricing model, yields a theoretical value reflecting current market prices. And it's basically interpreted as the market's estimation of future volatility in an asset. And it's basically the volatility implied by option prices. So really, this sounds like something I talked about a little bit before. In an insurance policy, right, if the insurance company thinks that you are likely to be a high risk in the future, they raise your premium. The policy costs more. That's implied volatility. It's the, you know, how expensive the options are based on what the market thinks the future volatility will be. And, you know, it's kind of it's kind of interesting, really, when you think about it. We can kind of gain, even if we're not trading options, we can kind of gain some insight to the opinion of the market by looking at implied volatility. We can say, oh, look, this option price is X. And then we can do some math. Well, we can use a mathematical model anyway and let that do the calculation for us. We can use a mathematical model to back out what the market thinks the future volatility is going to be. Because that, that volatility is implied by the market. And here's how it works. <clears throat> you guys have heard of the Black-Scholes model or perhaps the binomial pricing model. There's a good handful of them out there. Black-Scholes is the first and arguably, well, arguably the first and arguably the most well-known. <clears throat> Here's how they work in a roundabout sort of way. There's five inputs that will go into your option pricing model. The current underlying currency price, the strike price of the option, interest rates, okay, um, when you're actually using a, an option pricing model for currencies, they're going to have you enter two interest rates. The time to expiration, and then volatility. Now, I know what the current underlying price of the currency is. I know what the strike price is. I pretty much know what the interest rates are. I know what the time to expiration is. But volatility, how do I figure that out? Now, I said that your broker kind of will supply you with this information, volatility information. But where's your broker get it? Your broker can calculate realized volatility. That's just a you know annualized standard deviation. Any college kid with a uh, HP calculator can do that. But the implied volatility backed out from the option prices, hmm, now that's a little different. Here's how it works. The output of the option pricing model, here, let's go back for a second. The output of the option pricing model shown here is the theoretical value. But guess what? You, you already know the value of the option. That's there in the option chain. So basically, look at this as kind of an algebra equation. It's not these five inputs equal the output. It's the first four inputs, currency price, strike price, interest rate, and time, equals the value of the option that we know from the option chain, and we sell for V. We sell for the unknown, volatility. That's basically where your broker gets the information. <clears throat> they just run it through a model, and of course, you know, it's not like somebody sits there with a calculator. You know, they have models that calculate this for them, you know, real time, and it's very high-tech and efficient. 
but they take the value of options and they figure out what the expected volatility is. So now, okay, <clears throat> this, this implied volatility changes. And that's really intuitive that it would change, right? Because it's based on market's expectation for future volatility. If all of a sudden, you know, there's a, a country gets involved in a war or their banks are, you know, in trouble or something, the value of a currency can change greatly and its expectation for future volatility can change greatly. When implied, volat when implied volatility rises, that is, look at it as the expectation for future volatility rises, so do option prices. And that makes sense, just like, you know, back to the old standby example, insurance. You know, you get in three car accidents in a week, and your insurance company is going to raise your rates because they think you're a higher risk. A, you know, a country that runs into some economic trouble and its currency declines greatly, their option prices are probably going to increase as well. When the expect, expectation for future volatility, i.e. implied volatility, falls, so do option prices. This is the implied volatility that's derived from the options market. It's forward-looking. So, okay, we've got two different, two very different definitions of volatility. Two very different perspectives of volatility. One is backwards-looking that really has nothing to do with the options. It's just the calculation of what the currency prices have been over the past 30 days. And then we have one, implied volatility, that has everything to do with options that couldn't exist without options. It's a volatility figure that's backed out of option prices via the option pricing model that gives us some insight, by the way, as to what the market thinks future volatility will be. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.